continuum, they only provide this service as a SaaS service. A lot of these providers provide a SaaS service as well as resell their platform demand service providers, and uh, a lot of them also use their own software internally for ticketing and for customer service and that sort of thing. Um, so there's there's impact there as well. And then I also noticed that the agents on a lot of these platforms are running a system. So if I get on them and I can own that agent, um, easy access right there. Uh, so I, I don't know if who, who here was at DEF CON 20 and saw Dave Kennedy's talk, but um, he, he kind of gave this sort of same sort of talk uh, about uh, Microsoft Community Configuration Manager, SCCM. And basically, where you own SCCM and you own all the machines, right? Because it's going to do your bidding and push it out to everybody. Um, so this is kind of like that same concept, except for let's scale this across multiple companies. SCCM is an internet-facing, typically, and is only one company. But if I can attack a server that's managing multiple companies and it's internet-facing, the risk there goes way higher. So without further ado, let's check out some demos. So the first one I want to look at is an upload vulnerability. Moment of truth, Rex. <laughs> That's why I recorded these because <laughs> I knew I only had 15 minutes. So I wrote some Python scripts, proof of concept. That's probably really small for you. Um, but basically, what I'm doing there is uh, I'm going to specify a target and then specify a script that I want to upload or something I want to upload. Uh, basically, it's just going to upload an ASP command shell to the server. Uh, and as you saw before, I ran the script, I got a 404, so this didn't exist on the server prior to this. So, execute command. Now I got a shell. And I mean, as the IS, I mean, as the system account. <coughs> So SQL injection, so this is uh, a <laughs> little red light camera fun. Okay, so. All right, so in this one, um, I'm just going to uh, first test to see if my account is there. And it's not. Couldn't log in. So, uh, so I wrote a, a script that would basically add an admin account as the master user on it in the system. So we're going to add that demo. Specify target. And I'm using internal IPs just because it's a proof of concept demo net, but in theory we'd be putting in a public IP here. So specify username, specify password, delete password. I cannot say. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot release. You're my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, uh, I was able to get in and I'm logged in as a master account. I'm just going to run another SQL injection to remove that account. And this, this second SQL injection also cleanses all the logs, so it erases any presence that I was there. Um, another awesome thing about this attack is the way that their database schema was set up is that once I injected, I was able to successfully log in, I could do anything I wanted, but if a valid administrator logged in and tried to delete that account, it can't, it would throw up an error saying this account doesn't exist. Or if they tried to disable it or change the password, it wouldn't work. You had to actually get in the database and remove it. It's a feature. It's a feature, right? <laughs> it's APT. <laughs> So, I got one. I got one. I get a second because I said APT. Do I get a third now? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I thought, okay, well, those are cool and all, but 
So let's, let's put all this together. Just with those two vulnerabilities, what can I do? And uh, so that's where you know, it's checkmate. But so these vulnerabilities have been disclosed to the vendor, they've been patched, so, uh, but I. And that's why you can't say. But I can't say. You can, I assume, why I can't say. Leave that to your imagination. Uh, so I can specify IP, uh, specify what I want to upload to all the remote agents. Uh, this is basically just a piece of Python code that I uh, borrowed from Mr. Kennedy. And, uh, and then you can compile it to an EMC to run. And so this piece of Python code is guaranteed it's going to bypass all AV, they're not looking for it. Um, so specify that shell, it's basically a reverse shell going to connect back to me, and then I listen on port 31337, because I'm elite, and all the agents check back in me. I only had 10 agents on here. You'll notice I get 11 connections, because one of those is the server itself. It's connecting back to me, and I'm running all of that as system. So, and another, just like the other weird quirkiness uh, bug about this one was that every 15 minutes, all the agents would reverse connect back to me. It would just keep happening over and over. And, yeah, one time I left my laptop on, and uh, I came back and I had 30,000 connections back to me. So, <laughs> so I wrote another one that would remove that attack. <laughs> A feature. So... So this is just a diagram, basically what happened there is I sent one payload to the server, it distributed all of the payloads out to all the companies and all the computers that I'm running on, and they all reverse connect back to me. So now that the exciting stuff's over, we're talking about stuff. Uh, so the other risk area is, of course, of social engineering. Some of the attacks that I found um, on the server were not pre-auth. Both of these were pre-auth, so I attack without a valid account, but there were a lot of SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, things like that that were post-authentication, so obviously any valid session, easiest, best way to do that is email the help desk and say, hey, I can get into this link, you know, or it's not coming up in my browser, can you check it? Well, the help desk is always going to be logged into this software, so <coughs> you have a valid session token right there, and a lot of... Um, some of the uh, attacks I also found were uh, like unvalidated redirection. I love those because uh, if you get a phishing email, what's the first thing you're going to go look at? You're going to go look at the link and go, oh, okay, what, where's it coming? Going to go send me to? It's not a malicious site. It's my own server. Okay, that's fine. Well, the payloads at the end of that give one of the parameters. Um, you know, so uh, you know, other methods, phone calls, uh, physical. There's other types of social engineering. The ticketing system, that's also a great resource for attackers because there's a whole lot of information in there. There could be credentials, could be network details, anything else you could use to further uh, a social engineering attack as well. Um, the password management system, this is also three minutes in, uh, also a great uh, resource because a lot of companies are not doing this right. Um, you know, I've seen some companies that have just like a key pass database that pass around all their employees. What if an employee leaves and they walk up that database, right? You're going to go change all of your passwords off all of your, uh, no, you're not. Um, so uh, that's, that's one where you got to be able to revoke access and log and figure out, you know, what do they have access to. Um, and that leads to the next one, current, former employees, how do you restrict their access and, and revoke that? And then another one that's, that's you know doesn't come to mind immediately, but there's there's real business implications here is contracts and SLAs. Um, if if you don't set like uh, you know where where the demarcation of responsibility is, uh, the, the company's going to assume that you know anything that blinks and plugs into the law, you have you control over it. I can't count how many uh, people we talked to too that assume that oh well you're handling security too, right? You just start your own service provider, you, you're handling security. No, you know, we're, we're ops, so it's different. And then a breach disclosure policy, finding out, you know, if they do get compromised, am I, you know, what's your responsibility for telling me that? 
So, you know, what needs to be done? This talk was the first time I wrote it for DerbyCon. I was really focused on managed service providers, but I decided, you know what? It really applies to both ends of the spectrum. It's not only managed service providers, but also their customers. And, you know, here's some things we need to do. We need to, to choose our tools wisely. That's, that's hard, easy said, hard to do. Um, but uh, shameless plug here, Pressway does stuff like that. Um, and uh, I specifically do stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, and have a situational awareness, training your employees. And from a customer perspective, ask lots of questions. You know, you need to know some of the stuff and how you're, what risk you're taking, assuming and how, uh, how they're protecting you. And then audit your providers. We also do that. So, uh, it will be your contracts. So, so, that's basically it. Any questions? Supposedly, I have a, a, a pass here for tonight if anyone has a good question. No, Jason. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> so, what was your scope of con uh, context to put together to go after one service provider and go after all those other companies? Do you have, was that in your scope of work? Did, did all those other companies sign off on you compromising all of those as well? Well, I didn't do that. <laughs> Uh, as it was pre, this was, <laughs> this was pre Spider Labs too. So um, this was really just work I was doing on my own, just looking at at the platforms and just reverse engineering and figuring out how did it work and you know where, where vulnerabilities and that sort of thing. So I didn't actually compromise any companies, but you know VMware is good for that. Um, any other questions? I assume Jason already right now. <laughs> uh, so here's some uh, Spider Labs stuff here, and then um, again, here's my contact information. Somebody needs this. Who needs it? I need it. You need it? Okay, catch me in.